SCP-1386 is a white, good humor brand ice cream truck, in poor condition and lacking any images or descriptions of the product it sells. The van appears to be sapient, as it drives without a person behind the wheel. After the investigation of March 15, 2012, it has been concluded that none of the doors or windows on the vehicle open through conventional means. The van plays instrumental melodies of Pop Goes the Weasel and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star 24 hours a day, alternating between the two every four hours. On occasion, it has been known to play a version of Green Sleeves, but will immediately switch to another song when in the presence of customers. SCP-1386 has a thin slot in the middle of its driver's side door, which only becomes visible when it dispenses the various ice cream products it sells. Along with the ice cream, the van slides out a small slip of receipt paper with a price written on it, which has been described as very sloppy but legible handwriting. The van receives payment through the same slot it delivers ice cream from, and will drive away as soon as it is paid. The prices and flavors of the ice cream product it sells fluctuate daily, but it never runs out of its stocks of items. Notable tests of the van are as follows. March 30, 2012 Doctors R and D each requested one cookies and cream smoothie, and they were dispensed as asked. However, one smoothie was marked with a handwritten M and the other a handwritten G. The receipt was for $4.89 and was paid without incident. April 1, 2012 Dr. D requested one Napolitan ice cream sandwich. After several seconds, the van slid out what appeared to be a meat and cheese sandwich with tomato. The sandwich was made out of chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry ice cream, respectively. The receipt given said April Fools and the van drove away before Dr. D inquired about payment. April 12, 2012 Dr. D asked for a single scoop vanilla ice cream cone and a waffle cone. The product was dispensed as asked with a receipt that read 72 cents and was paid without incident. April 17, 2012 Dr. F requested one peach push pop and received it along with a receipt of $16.27. Dr. F expressed disapproval at the price for the ice cream and refused to pay the full amount, instead paying a total of $3.75 in quarters. When Dr. F attempted to walk away, the van opened the slot in its doors to an approximate height of 6 feet and dragged Dr. F inside of it by use of a large and rusted steel trap. The van then returned its slots to its former size and proceeded to spew out a pink substance from its slot for five straight minutes before then driving away, with no further incident. Upon inspection of the pink substance, it was found to consist of blood, skin tissue, and bone fragments whose DNA signature matched that of Dr. S. Due to the incident of April 17, 2012, all further attempts to interact with SCP-1386 must be through D-Class personnel. April 27, 2012 Personnel D asked the van for a cherry popsicle, adding, with nuts. The van seemed to wait several seconds, then dispensed a single cherry popsicle unwrapped with nuts embedded in the ice. The receipt given read, $2.20, you're nuts. And D was recorded as chuckling as he read the paper. The van was paid without incident. April 30, 2012 Personnel D requested a Caesar salad flavor popsicle. After a few moments, the van dispensed a popsicle with an off-green coloration and was noted to taste of lightly dressed lettuce with a hint of croutons. The receipt was for $4.56 and was paid without incident. May 4, 2012 Personnel D asked for a dark chocolate fudge pop and received it with a receipt of $1.38, paid for it with two single dollar bills. After receiving payment, the van made a sound akin to a cash register from within what is presumably the area in which the ice cream is stored, and then dispensed a small factory-wrapped package. There was no written indication of what was contained inside the package, but on the front there was a crudely drawn image of what appeared to be various coins, all of American currency. The van drove off once the package was dispensed. At the urging of Dr. J. D was then assigned to inspect the content of the package. The package was found to have a total of 62 cents in American currency. When the coins were considered safe, D asked if he could keep the change. Request was denied. May 10, 2012 
Personnel D asked for an ice cream Kinder Egg, which was dispensed along with a receipt for $3.87 with a pay without incident. The Kinder Egg appeared similar to the kind popular in Europe, though made of ice cream instead of chocolate. D reported the exterior to be made of coffee ice cream and the interior of French vanilla. However, there was no toy inside as ordinary Kinder Eggs have. Instead, there was a small slip of parchment paper that read, I owe you one toy. May 16, 2012 Personnel D requested the following, in order, one cherry ice lolly, one cherry ice pop, one cherry popsicle, and one cherry flavored drink frozen. The van made what D described as a real unnerving sound like someone skinning a cat in reverse for several seconds before flinging out of its, of its slot red sticks of unwrapped ice, shattering them on the pavement. Moments later, it dispensed a large styrofoam cup full of a frozen green liquid. D was noted as asking the van, what do I owe you, and was given no response before the van drove off. Upon inspection of the shards of ice from the first three sticks, it was discovered that the frozen substance was made up of two parts water, one part arsenic, and red food dye. The styrofoam cup was found to contain an unknown substance with a melting point so high it is impossible to thaw out with current technology. The substance and the cup are currently being withheld for further examination. May 20, 2012 Our new procedure has been tested. Personnel D mute but able to write requested a vanilla cone and chocolate through use of pencil and paper. The request was raised to the area where the dispensing slot usually appears. After a full minute, the van opened another slot three inches lower than a normal one. A thin, flesh-colored appendage slid out of the slot to retrieve the paper before retreating and closing the slot. Moments later, the normal slot opened and the ice cream was received. The receipt was for 97 cents and was paid without incident. When questioned about the transaction, D responded in frantic sign language it is transcribed as follows. It was a hand, not human, two fingers and a thumb. It was bony like a dead body and it smelled it smelled dead. D refused to eat the ice cream that was received, claiming that they had lost their appetite. May 30th, 2012. Following the events of May 20th, 2012, personnel D who is not mute, was given the order to repeat the same test, writing the request on paper and giving it to the van. The van received the paper through a secondary slot by use of another flesh-colored appendage and completed the transaction as requested. The receipt was for 86 cents and was paid without incident. When questioned about the transaction and the appendage in particular, D responded, I don't see what B was getting all worked up about. It's just a hand, you know. There's probably just some guy in there handing out ice cream. Sure, it's weird, but what here isn't? June 4, 2012 Personnel D Also not mute, was given the order to write a new request on paper and give it to the van. The request was for a banana sundae with hot fudge. As in previous tests, the van accepted the paper through a secondary slot by use of its hand and processed the request. The receipt was for $2.78 and was paid without incident. When questioned about the transaction, D stated, There's got to be somebody in there. I could swear I heard somebody cough, like they had a cold or something. When the topic of the hand was further pushed, D responded, Look, it's not that big a deal. Just a hand. Got all five fingers, looked healthy, certainly not dead or whatever. B just lost it. Never trusted that guy much anyways. June 6, 2012. No test. Personnel D logged at May 30th, 2012, was found dead in her holding block at 7:40 in the morning. Approximate time of death is 4:30 a.m. Autopsy shows that D died of strangulation, and light bruising on the neck confirms this. D death has been marked as suicide as it did not share a cell with any other personnel, and her cell door showed no sign of forced entry.